Productivity. It's a pretty pretentious term. But it is the concept that defines pretty much all worthwhile task completion that makes the world go round. When we're productive, we produce outputs in a great many forms. I personally am a pretty constantly productive person. I'm Chris K. Daniels. I'm a filmmaker and entrepreneur currently directing my biggest movie yet, while running and operating three businesses on top of that. I find that if I'm not constantly working on something or being productive, I feel bad. This comes from a place of passion, which leads to a place of constant ideas and projects and tasks. And without organization, I would have absolutely no chance of actually making any of my goals and dreams come true. So I've implemented a relatively simple but immensely effective task management system that helps me achieve what I strive to. Juggling hundreds of micro projects while being self-employed full-time can get messy without organization. Trust me. So let me show you the system I use to keep my goals on track. Hey everybody, excuse the whole quarantine look we got going on here, but let's jump right into it. So this is gonna be how I stay productive with a task management app, how I kind of keep everything structured, all my different projects, different specific task-based stuff that I have going on, all together. I mean, it's a lot of things happening at once, a lot of scheduling specific tasks that need to be done by specific deadlines. And uh, before task management, it was a mess. And now I think I have a pretty good structure to the way everything goes down. So we're gonna be using TickTick. -tick. I'm gonna be using TickTick -tick specifically, but um, this is applicable to pretty much any task-based app, Todoist, Wonderlist. I've tried a great many in my day, and I found TickTick -tick to be the best in pretty much every regard. But hey, to, to each his own. I should say, this is not a, a paid sponsorship situation. Uh, Tick Tick does not pay me to talk about them. Again, that's why I apply this to any task management, whatever. This is just the one I like. Not paid, not sponsored. Okay, so let's jump in here. These are the, the sort of tabs that Tick Tick is broken up into. Uh, they have, I, I don't remember what the defaults are. These are, I think the defaults plus maybe uh, next seven days or today. Um, you can change up what's seen there through the settings. Everything's pretty customizable, which is awesome. You can go over to smart lists and settings and uh, show or hide different things depending on what you wanna see. I stick with today because I find a nice 24 hour span is the best way of going about projects in a day. It's looking at things a little beyond one task at a time, but less than a week at a time or a month at a time. I find that to be less productive, a little more, um, you know, distracting. Um, I find it effective at the beginning of the month to kind of go through and add specific things that you know you want to get done in the month. So whether that's, you know, for me, finishing a rough cut by halfway through May or, you know, finding a composer by uh, end of April, things like that I could figure out, you know, a month in advance, but then smaller subtasks, things like implement this change or organize the website or deal with certain pre-production tasks or audition based things that kind of come up by the weeks. But then breaking things up into more specific subtasks and stuff I find much more useful and effective for staying on track. Breaking those up within weeks and days and, and stuff. So in my today smart list, I have everything broken up into three main what TickTick -Tick calls tags. But pretty much their categories. And uh, I read a killer article, I'll link it down below. Basically it was the idea of every task that you do in a day should be broken up into not priority or you know project based, but focus level based. So low focus, medium focus, high focus. So you know what you should work on first thing in the morning, you know what you should work on in your, your most sort of concentrated part of the morning, which is like whatever people say, an hour, two hours after you wake up. Uh, so I, I, I implemented that, I tested it out and then I loved it, so I made it full scale. So I break everything up into low focus, medium focus, and high focus now. I generally do my high focus tasks about an hour after waking up, and then I try to get through all of those first, and then you know work my way down. So then I go through medium focus tasks, low focus tasks, maybe during a lunch break, you know, take my lunch break and then come back and do a low focus task to kind of get back into the work mode and then go back up to medium focus tasks, things like that. But being able to organize it by that, you know, criteria makes it easier to look at at a quick glance and know like, oh, well, these are the things that are going to take more out of me. Like I can't listen to a podcast in the background of a high focus task that takes everything. I have to listen, I have to watch. So things like, you know, edit podcast video I have in that section, optimize cinematic YouTube SEO. So that's going to be like studying tags and seeing how things rank, uh, set up Facebook pixel marketing plan, record tick tick video like I'm doing right now. Um, these are things that take 
all of my attention. So things that I have to prioritize early in the morning so I don't push them off. So they have the, the bulk of my concentration. And um, you know, ideally once I get through those, um, I get through my medium tasks, things that will take like, you know, concentration, but I can maybe be doing something in the background. I can maybe be multitasking a little bit. And then low focus tasks, which are easy peasy, uh, le I, would, I don't want to say mindless, but things that definitely take a whole lot less focus. So I definitely recommend that to people with a ridiculous amount of tasks to get through in a day span. Uh, but let's change up the view here. So if you click the sort button up here, you can see generally how uh, task management things are based. And that is by list. And um, this this is kind of splitting it by project list, which you can see I have my inbox, which is like the generic, just add a task, uh, you know, do laundry, and that will automatically add it to the inbox. That's just kind of the uncategorized section. But um, get rid of that, because I'm not doing laundry today. Um, but I, I never use that. I never use organizing it by project. I don't find that to be useful. If I want to do that, then you can go into your specific project section. So if I have a directing thing I want to work on specifically, so if today I just have to work specifically on short films, nothing else, not getting distracted by the business, not getting distracted by side hustles, I will go into my For the Good of the People, which is my you know big film project that I'm working on right now over the last six months. So that's the project of all projects in terms of task management. So let's say I want to just work on For the Good of the People directing stuff today. So, you know, I will stay just in this folder. So I would look at it like this and I would see these are all tasks specifically for this project. So I could implement today's editing changes first of all, then I could do my, you know, temp poster mock-up. I could schedule these out on the day. But if I'm gonna stick to one specific project, then rather than organize my today section by that project, I would go into the project folder. Um, I find that to be effective if it's one specific project that you kind of have to prioritize across like maybe a weekend, then you just stay in that folder for the weekend. So anyway, you can also organize the today section by uh, date. Again, that's a little off because the today section is the one I stick with. So it's generally today, but doing that, you can see things that I have overdue and things that I have actually due today. So these are things that are scheduled to be done today. These are things that are overdue that were supposed to be done yesterday, or <laughs> in this case, May 7th. So um, you can see I'm a bit of a slacker on these, but it was a crazy week. So I had a ridiculous amount of tasks that I did complete. So anyway, these I would take and I would reapply. So sync audio for Become Ultima. I'm working on this weekend getting an assistant editor to help me sync audio stuff. So this would be dependent on how Saturday goes. So if you take a look at my general career thing, which is another list I have, I would use the hire an assistant editor, which will be happening tomorrow sometime. So that task will be dependent on this task. So I would go over to sync all audio. So I would change it from being due yesterday to being due probably if I have a assistant editor by Saturday, explain to them the lay of the land, maybe Wednesday, I'll have them start working on that. So change that date. Now it's no longer overdue. Now I have a more well thought out uh, due date of when it's gonna be. Cause sometimes I will throw a date onto projects. That I don't necessarily have a specific requirement. And then once things get closer to that date, I have other projects that do have deadlines and specific requirements so I can change those. So overdue is not uh, to, you know, to crush your spirit on things that you didn't finish, but sometimes it's a way of just kind of reprioritizing things. That's how I use it anyway. Let's go back to my buy tag. So by tag, again, I, I'll show you how to make the tag in Tick Tick specifically, but the way I broke down the low focus, medium focus, high focus situation is by adding tags to it. So Tick Tick by default has a, a priority system. So you can give things a low priority, a medium priority or high priority. And that's cool. I use that to an extent, you know, I give my high priority things, but I find a lot of things to be high priority and then some things to be medium priority. I find low priority is like, you know, sometimes a thing will be low priority, but I think, things like that are kind of self-explanatory for me. So I feel like adding a color system to how much of a priority something is, isn't necessarily useful to me because everything needs to get done and the date kind of enforces when it needs to get done by. So having a priority system isn't the most useful to me. And unfortunately you can't customize uh, that to say whatever you want to say. Otherwise I would have used that for the focus meter. But uh, the way I did it is under tags. I added my own custom tags for low focus, medium focus, high focus with colors, you know, green for low, yellow for medium, red for high. And um, I just copy and pasted symbols. So it looked a little more bold and a little different than the rest of the fonts in here. So it really stuck out. And, um, and yeah, then you can add uh, tags to your tasks. So let's say I have to today import podcast audio. 
So I will add that in. You can click enter to add it without adding anything uh, additional right there. And then you'll see automatically it goes into my inbox, no tags. And by default, I have it set to make everything a high priority task because most things are high priority tasks. But so then I could click it, I could go into it. I could add a description if I wanted to. I could say, you know, from Saturday's recording session something like that, that's probably stupid because in my head, this is just me that uses this, I know when we've recorded, but hey, maybe you want that description. Also within here, you can add subtasks, which is super useful. A bunch of apps when I was exploring which task management app I wanted to use didn't have subtasks, that's a deal breaker. But uh, if it's import podcast audio, maybe you can say uh, from Zoom mic, from uh, audio interface, from camera and you can say okay well I want to import podcast audio that's the the overall task but then within that I have to do my zoom mic which is one SD card audio interface which is another SD card and then the camera which is a solid state drive so you can go through those specifically um, same thing you can set reminders to tell you at specific times to get the subtasks done and you can set the same thing by default when I enter a task in on the today it gives it a due date of today um, but I can change that right up here I generally in the morning or the night before, we'll add a bunch of specific tasks. So if I have a big task, I'll kind of break that up into smaller tasks for the next day or for the day of. And then that's why I use the today section so heavily. So I will like full blown plan my day in here. So if I have, I know I have to do certain editing things and I have a broad picture of, you know, implement today's editing changes, I can specifically break down what editing changes or what SEO things have to be done or what project management things have to be thrown in. And I will do that, like I said, the night before or the day of all in this today section. But uh, right over here, you can change it to whatever project you want. So these guys right here are my lists, which are just projects for me and for most people. But I have things broken up into some folders, directing uh, Cinemonic, which is my business, producing. So these are things that I'm directing slash editing. These are things that I'm strictly producing. So that'll be pre-production, business stuff, uh, uh, budgetary, whatever. And then down here is, uh, you know, other stuff that doesn't necessarily fall into these three categories because these three categories are usually filled with multiple projects. It's less stressful to look at to put it into folders, but these ones don't fit into folders. So Hateful World, which is another YouTube channel that I work on, uh, general career things, that's things that kind of don't fall under anything specific for a project, kind of like things that are productive tasks, but aren't necessarily one project. So it could be a thing that's partially producing, partially directing, whatever. So like import podcast audio, that would be specifically under Cinemonic, better off, better podcast, obviously. So I put that there. Um, I could then click these little dots over here, tags, this little screen with my tags. I will say import podcast audio. That's actually a low focus task. So I will click save on that because once I drag and drop, it pretty much does it in the background and I can go do something else. I'll give you a real quick look at uh, my projects more specifically. Like I said, everything's broken up into uh, either their own project folders or project folders within subfolders of whatever category the things are in. So. Like I said, uh, directing, self-explanatory projects I'm directing right now. Some of them are in post-production, some of them are in um, distribution phase. So for the good of the people, for example, like I said, is my big project I have going on right now. So these are a lot of tasks that I have specific dates for. There's some of these uh, that don't have specific dates for. So implement today's editing changes. That would be today. I would give a due date of today. Prepare something to export for class. Um, that's something that I have to show for next week. So I would say that's probably gonna be due Monday because I have the thing on Tuesday. Uh, send stills, uh, reschedule. There's a one more scene we have to shoot, so I have to still schedule that. That's something I've just been pushing off and pushing off now. So right now it's May 27th, but because of uh, the lockdown, who the hell knows when that's gonna happen, but create a trailer. That's something that I don't have a specific date for, but I know it'll be sometime in mid-June. So for now, I could set kind of early-ish to mid-June, maybe Wednesday, June 10th. I can set it right there and boom. Then Cinemonic, I have my specific projects with the podcast, the web content, and then um, the film festival that we have through the company, and of course, general business, things that are under the neck of Cinemonic, but don't have a specific project type. Producing, same as directing, but things I'm specifically producing. Regular tasks, regular tasks I use as things that are not really project-based, so things like, you know, clean room, pay for my parking spot, cancel Apple Music, because Apple Music sucks. Um, things like that that definitely don't fall under a project but I still need to get done. Um, pay my parking spot, I have to do the first of the month every time. So that's just a reminder of a task I have to do at a specific time. Being able to set 
things to automate and to re-add themselves as a task is huge for me. So pay parking spot is an obvious one. So that's things like if you have to pay a bill, that's cool. That's something that would go in your regular tasks folder, but even something from me where it'd be like for Cinemonic, let's say the podcast, let's say import podcast audio. Every week I do have to import podcast audio. So I could say every, we record on Tuesday. So I could say every Wednesday, let's say this is actually due Wednesday the 13th. And then I could set a repeat and say, this will remind me every week and boom, it automatically, you can see the little dots right there. It's gonna do it every Wednesday. It's gonna tell me that I have to import podcast audio because in theory, I do. I could set even a specific time for that. Let's say uh, I want to do that every Wednesday at 11 a.m. I wanna make sure I import my audio at 11 a.m. every Wednesday, boom. That's killer, that saves time, that saves memory, having to remember to do a specific thing over and over again. It's super useful, automation. But yeah, so that's that's my project breakdown. Um, projects, you know, specific to people, but that's how I use my projects. The folders really help for things that can be categorized into folders, things like this. So North Andover Community Programs, that's something that I have that's a, a, a temporary sort of freelance job that's gonna be lasting over the next like two months. So that wouldn't fall under any of these because it's like a freelance shoot, which I don't generally do. But um, I, I, you know, I give that uh, a color edit. I give it a nice red, so it's bold because it's something that is important. It's something that I do have to prioritize, but um, will eventually be completed. Right now, I don't have any active tasks in there, but you can see, I actually do have an active task in there. So I can say, uh, download videos from online. So they upload a bunch of you know videos people are recording online that I have to download and edit. So I can say, download videos from online. Um, by default, priority three. I will say that is due tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. It's due Monday, but I know I want to do it tomorrow. So that's usually how I use what day things are due. I will add that. And I will say in terms of tagging, that is like a, I would say medium focus because I have to, you know, look into the specific titles and the people uploading and stuff, but I don't really have to full blown pay attention like I would with editing or something like that. So boom. And you can see now I have that task that'll pop up on my today section tomorrow. And I will know that I have to do it tomorrow. Um, one more thing, if you're into this type of deal, I was briefly, it helps in some ways. I love colors. You can see I use colors like hell. All my directing projects are broken into yellow. All my cinemonic stuff, while they're different projects, so it's a little different than directing, um, they're different shades of green because they're much more varying projects, but still all under the scope of cinemonic. So shades of green producing are all shades of um, lighter green, like a pukey green. And then down here, all have their own colors. So Hateful World, Pink, General Care, Things Blue. You see, colors are super useful. So in my today section, I see uh, the project right there, but more specifically, I see the little dot to know what type of project it is. Um, and the colors uh, on the checkbox, unfortunately, don't associate to that. That's what I would rather if the checkbox, if you could somehow customize that checkbox to be associated with that same color, just so it's more, um, you know, in harmony with itself. But that color is actually associated to the priority level. So high, medium, or low. And like I said, I don't utilize that to its fullest, but so everything is generally red or, uh, red or yellow for me. But I got distracted there. The thing I was gonna say besides utilizing colors is you can use little graphics in here. And I didn't know this for a long time, but let's say I wanna go for um, side hustles, right? Let's go to Google real quick. We will copy and paste this. This is easier if you're on a smartphone, you can just type in the emoji, but I am not. So I will copy that from Emojipedia and I will go back to Tick Tick. Um, I will click side hustle. So in theory, these are side hustles to make some money. I will click edit. If you put an emoji right before the list name, fun fact, enter it in right there, save. It makes the icon for that project, for that list, uh, the emoji, which is cool. And then, so if I have a side hustle thing to do under today, you can look at high focus tasks. You can see record tick tick video under side hustle, set up Facebook pixel marketing under side hustle. And it has that little picture. I ended up finding it to be a little more cluttered, a little more messy to have emojis all over the place. But again, visual people, I am a, I like organized minimal colors to kind of break down my, my uh, graphic stuff. But if you're into little icons and stuff, it implements super well with TickTick and probably a lot of other task management apps, but that's how you do that if you're into that type of thing. Let me show you my last thing that I do, which is what really keeps me on track as, as days go by. That is time blocking. I recommend everybody utilize time blocking in some way. Maybe it's not scheduling every minute of your day out, scheduling, you know, to a T when things have to be done. But I find that if there's days where I'm lacking focus or lacking like, or, or procrastinating, whatever, a 
a, a savior to that is blocking out times for when you have to do things by. For me, at least, it creates like a guilt for not doing the thing or like knowing I have uh, two hours to complete this thing. If I'm pushing it off and then two hours pass, then I have another project that starts right after that. Then it's like, oh God, you know, I'm falling behind. I have a schedule and I'm not abiding by this schedule. So, TikTok -tick has a killer time blocking system. If you go into calendar, calendar is also cool. You can see um, calendar, you can see your tasks broken down by when they're due. You can see these are all grayed out because these are tasks I completed in April. But um, you can see my May is a little more uh, all over the place. I have things for the next two days, but then they're kind of parsed out across here. And a lot of things I have undated right now just because with the lockdown, a lot of things are all over the place. But once I add dates, those will all appear here. April's a better example just to see kind of how things fall into place. But um, if you go to the day section, this is what I find the most useful in the calendar section, is you can actually fully time block. So if I go up to May 8th, which is today, I can break down what my day is going to look like. So it's 930 right now, so I'm a little late to this, but let's say um, I have a lot of things to do today. I want to implement today's editing changes. That's my big project today. So at 10 a.m. is when I'm going to start that. My mind's awake. That'll be full focus mode. Let's say 10 to 1 o'clock is when I'm going to do that, right? Cool. One o'clock, I know I'm probably going to walk at that time. So you can drag things from up here. These are things that I have from my today section, from my projects, specifically dated for today. But you can also add things in right from here. So at one o'clock, let's say I want to walk. I am going to add that there. I'm going to add that to regular tasks. Walking is not really a project based thing. One o'clock, I will probably say I give this a tag to to add a, a shortcut to add a tag to something is just type a, a little hashtag there, a little number sign, and then you can click on which tag you want. So walking is obviously a low focus task and boom, hit enter, hit enter and walk. Walking is probably going to take me an hour. So one to two o'clock, I will walk and it's color coordinated to the project color, which like I said, I love utilizing color coordination. And I think the, the time blocking in TickTick is the best user of color in all of TickTick. So once I get back at two o'clock, you could say I will design my new YouTube channel. That is a medium focused task probably. So two o'clock to three o'clock, get me back on track. That'll probably be an hour, a little graphic design, typing, easy peasy stuff. But then I will be back into focus mode. So I will go for a high priority tasks. So if I go to today and look at my high focus tasks, I will look at, hmm, uh, maybe set up Facebook pixel marketing, uh, optimize cinematic YouTube SEO. That's probably what I should do at that point. So a little more business stuff. Let's go back to calendar day. Let's say optimize cinematic YouTube SEO from three o'clock to 4.30. So I will block that out. And you could also, if you want to multitask certain things, so let's say optimizing YouTube SEO falls in line with setting up Facebook pixel marketing, maybe it, it really doesn't. Let's change that. Let's say, um, you know, creating an expense sheet in Notion. Let's say I do that at five o'clock and that'll take me five to six. But at the same time in doing that, I'm probably going to want to order this puzzle and save the receipt because that will go into the expense sheet, right? So that's a quick little task, quick, low focus task. Um, and I will add that at the same time. So five to six, I'm creating an expense sheet in Notion, but also between five and 530, I'm going to order the puzzle and then save that receipt. So multitasking. And yeah, so that that's time blocking. That's the gist of it. But time blocking, so powerful. It's how I'm able to schedule out my days and get like, if I have you know, five projects that I'm in the midst of with 20 tasks. That's how I do it. And I try not to do that many tasks in a single day because that becomes unrealistic. But, um, you know, that's how I can work on a short film, edit it, do pre-production, answer emails regarding people that are working for me on that short film, and then also, you know, jump over to the business side of things, run the business, go through asking questions about the film festival. It could be jumping onto my Shopify, dealing with sales, all these great many things that are kind of all over the place, completely different parts of my brain, seeing them all listed out here with colors, with times, with due dates, with priorities. It keeps everything structured. It is literally a lifesaver. Before this, I had things written in journals. Sometimes I had things on my email. I had things in my mind, things everywhere. And it was hell. And this is much less of a hell, much more of an organized, beautiful structure to look at. And I swear by task management. It satisfies me to set up at night in the morning. It's the best. It keeps everything in check. TickTick -tick has a bunch of other killer options like custom lists. You can look that up, smart lists. 
Uh, that's just adding things with different variables. So if I want to make a list with like all my medium focus tasks, but also things that low priority with a due date of sometime in the next week, things like that. You can add like a bunch of different variables if for some reason you have a bunch of specific criteria you want for a list and then that'll add it up to this section uh, up there. So that's cool. And then also Tick Tick has a Pomodoro timer option built into it too. I don't use that personally. I've dabbled with it in the past, but I find it much more effective for me to just kind of focus and work for hours on end rather than to focus for blocks and then take time off for blocks. I don't know, not my thing, but a lot of people swear by it and it is easily implemented into Tick Tick, which is sick. But um, if you don't have Tick Tick, you can easily do that with a timer and with uh, any other like you can do that with a piece of paper and a timer. So that is the way I use task management. Um, it has saved me, it could save you too. I recommend it to anybody that has a lot of things going on, a lot of projects, a lot of tasks, a lot of things in the day. Even if they're small tasks, even if it's like grocery shopping and you wanna make lists, if you wanna you know, clean your room and if you wanna get specific about other little things, maybe homework, it's great for homework. I have a, a section over here for um, things due this semester. I've used it when I've had busier semesters. I've broken that into an actual folder where that's been class by class by class. But it, it's great for all these things. It's so applicable to any industry, anything that you're doing that's task-based. Just manage your tasks. It is a savior. You get so much more done. That is what's made me be able to be as productive as I have been in these last few months. Well, that's all for this video. Hopefully you've found it valuable. Um, it's a little inside scoop. It's, you know, personally how I use task management, but hopefully that does something for you. Hopefully you can implement it into the way you use task management. If you like the video, hit me with a like, hit me with a subscribe, all that good stuff. I have a whole lot of other things planned coming at you real soon. This was a bit of a rambled mess, but I've done a lot of things these last few months, these last few years, in fact, and I wanna make a lot of content based on that. I wanna show you what I've been doing, how uh, I've done what I've done, a lot of the cooler things that you know, have gone successfully in these last few years. I wanna show you how I've done those things, things that you could do, things that, you know, have not worked out for me, things to avoid doing, all that. There's a lot of things, a lot of things to talk about, a lot of projects going on, a lot of exciting things. So stay tuned for all that. Thank you so much. I will see you on the flip.